Good morning. I hope you're all well. This morning we are looking at Psalm 23. Uh, Psalm 23 is probably the most well-known psalm in all of the Psalter. And many Christians love this psalm very much. Perhaps from Sunday school times, you have memorized this psalm. Uh, it's a psalm of David. Psalm 23 is very precious to us because it describes the experiences of the Christian, of the child of God. The title and theme of the psalm is the very first line. The Lord is my shepherd. Is this your confession? Uh, is this your experience? Have you come to this knowledge that the Lord is your shepherd? Can you, like David, say, the Lord is my shepherd? We all need the Lord to be our shepherd. And indeed, the Lord very much wants to be our shepherd. Often life is not easy. Uh, we live in a dark, each dark society. For Christians, often life is not easy. But this morning, the Lord wants to remind you that he is your shepherd. Let us look at the structure of the psalm. It's very short, but it's very beautiful. Notice we have three stanzas there. The first stanza, verses 1 to 3. The second stanza, uh, verses 4 and 5. And then the last stanza, the conclusion, verse 6. So there are three stanzas or three divisions. Also note that there are three places identified in the psalm. These three places, the green pastures, the valley, and the house of the Lord, these three places refer to the three experiences in the life of the Christian. The theme of the psalm is the Lord is my shepherd. This is the overall sentiment that runs throughout the whole psalm. And this was experienced in David's life. Of course, David experienced a lot of things in his life. He learned many things. But for David, the most important thing, the most precious thing is that the Lord is my shepherd. We sometimes say that there are only two things here in life, and that is death and taxes. <laughs> we are all very familiar with these two hard realities. But for David, there is one thing that is even more sure, more confirmed than death and taxes. And that is that the Lord is my shepherd. The first word of the psalm is the Lord. Who is the Lord? Of course, we know the Lord is none other than the creator and the sustainer of the universe. The Lord is none other than the God of the Israelites, their redeemer. But also more than that, we know that the Lord is even our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the good shepherd. Remember Jesus' words in John chapter 10? Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. 
Uh, notice the context of Psalm 23. What comes before Psalm 23? Psalm 22. You're all very clever. Uh, what comes after Psalm 23? Psalm 24. This is very significant. Uh, what happens in Psalm 22? Do you remember the first words of Psalm 22? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's a clear prophecy. It's a clear reference to the Lord Jesus Christ, to his work on the cross. In other words, the truth of Psalm 23 flows from Psalm 22. Because Jesus came, because he died for the sins of his people, we can have the blessing of Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. And then in Psalm 24, we have the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, there are many prophecies that God himself will come and be the shepherd of his people. And this is what happens in the gospel. Uh, this is what happens with the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. In other words, how does the Lord, the almighty creator and sustainer of the universe, the Holy One, the all-powerful One, how does he become your shepherd? It is through the gospel. It is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. You must know the content of the psalm, but more importantly, you must know the shepherd that this psalm is describing. You must know the Lord Jesus Christ. If we do not know him, the things that Psalm 23 is talking about, all these things will be foreign to you. So let us learn about Psalm 23, the content, but also, more importantly, let us know, let us learn about the shepherd of Psalm 23. We must know the shepherd. And may this be our experience in this new year, in the year 2023. Listen to his voice and follow him every day of your life. And where will this shepherd lead you? Where will you go? Note the three places. There are green pastures. There's a valley. And then there is also a house. So first of all, uh, note the green pastures. This is stanza one, verses one to three. Here, because the Lord is David's shepherd, David experiences five blessings. The first blessing, he says, I shall not want. Now, in order for us to appreciate what David means here, we need to know that in Israel, sheep are tended in the wilderness. Like when he talks about tending sheep in Israel, it's not talking about, we should not be thinking about the green rolling hills in England or in Victoria. No, in Israel, it's wilderness. Uh, there are not much there to eat. It's semi-desert. The wilderness is tough. It's hot. Uh, there are not many things there to eat. It's dangerous. Uh, there are wolves and bears and lions in ancient Israel. And there are many uh, crevices and uh, dangerous uh, hills. The wilderness in the Bible stands for the world in which we live. Yet, despite being in the wilderness... God will provide for his sheep. 
This was Israel's experience in the wilderness when they came out of Egypt. God provided for them manna. Every day they had enough to eat. This was David's experience in his life. This was Paul's experience. Often they were scorned, they were rejected, but yet God did not fail to provide for them. And of course, this is also our experience. We may lose our job. We may even lose our health. Nevertheless, we always find that God is there for us to meet all our needs. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Sheep seldom lie down. It's very difficult. It's very rare for a sheep to lie down in the field. Have you ever seen a sheep lie down in the field? I guess not. The same is true of us. Our hearts are often very anxious. Remember Jesus' words to Martha? Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. But only one thing is necessary. And Mary, Martha's sister, has chosen that good part, which is to sit quietly and to learn at Jesus' feet. Often sheep is anxious. Uh, they have lots of fears. Uh, uh, often uh, uh, many things uh, disturb sheep, anxieties, flies, maggots. Hunger uh, does not allow the sheep to lie down and to rest. However, in the psalm, David has experienced that the Lord is his shepherd. The Lord makes him to lie down, to be able to feed on the green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Uh, sheep needs grass, but also water. If a sheep does not eat, uh, drink, drink water, very soon the sheep will become dehydrated. Uh, the grass will form a very thick ball in its stomach, and it will die very soon, very quickly. But a sheep will never drink out of a fast-flowing stream or turbulent waters. The waters must be calm and still, and then the sheep uh, will drink. Uh, I think there are interesting spiritual lessons for us here, too, as God's people. Uh, we need to feed on God's word. But in addition to that, we need the illumination, the unction of the Holy Spirit to understand God's word and to apply God's word to our hearts. In the Bible, water often symbolizes the work of the Holy Spirit. In other words, it's not enough just to have an academic understanding of God's word. No. God's word needs to enlighten us, needs to convict us, needs to change us. And of course, this only happens uh, through the power of the Spirit. Christians need to get up early for prayer and meditation. A sheep must get up early to catch the dew, as it were, early in the morning. Uh, and then uh, the result of verse 2 is verse 3. He restores my soul. After nourishment, uh, after rest, after fresh water, there is refreshment uh, in the life of the believer. God uses means to restore and to refresh us. In the Bible, we have many examples. Remember Elijah? Uh, he was very zealous for the Lord amidst a society that rejected God. And the king was out to get him. And then Elijah ran away. And he was sitting under a tree. And then God provided for him through ravens. 
uh, he had his fill. And then he was strengthened to run for another 40 days to Mount Sinai and there to meet with the Lord. Uh, through nourishment on God's word, uh, through the living water that the Spirit gives, we are being restored. And then God assigns us our task. This is the fifth blessing. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Again, this was Israel's experience in the wilderness. God did not just bring them, brought them out of Egypt, but God also guided them and led them throughout the wilderness experience. Sheep can easily get lost in the wilderness. But the good shepherd will always lead his sheep. And he will always lead them along the best path for them. Not always the easiest or the shortest path, but certainly the best path. And the path that will surely lead them to their destination. So too, the Lord will guide his sheep in the course of their lives. Jesus will provide for all your needs. Uh, this is the first assurance that we may take from the first stanza of the psalm. Jesus will provide for all your needs. So David says in Psalm 34, taste and see that the Lord is good. In the Second stanza, we know that there are valleys and enemies in the life of the Christian. The Christian life is not always easy. Why? At least two reasons. One, because Christians are still human. Christians still live in this world. And often this world is not a nice place to live in. But secondly... Uh, Christians, for Christians, life often is not easy because they are Christians. They also have a cross to carry. However, there is great consolation. In suffering, in the difficulties, in the valley, there is a closer relationship with God. Note what the psalmist says, for you are with me. Only three little words in the Hebrew, but so precious. It is interesting to note that verses 1 to 3 uses the third personal pronoun, he. But now verses 4 and 5 uses the second personal pronoun, you. Verses 1 to 3 talks about the shepherd, now, verses 4 to 5 talks to the shepherd. There is a much closer relationship. Through suffering in the valley, there is a much closer experience of God. Also note that this line, for you are with me, three words stands right in the middle of the psalm. All up, Psalm 23 has 55 words. Before these three words, there are 26 words. And after these three words, for you are with me, there are 26 words. Before this line, there are five blessings. After this line, again, there are five blessings. So here we are right in the heart of Psalm 23. You are with me. And of course, for us as Christians, when we hear these words, we can only think about one thing, and that is the gospel. Emmanuel, God with us. The word God became flesh, and he dwelt among us. He came in order that he might die, that we may live. 
Indeed, because of his death, we now no longer need to fear death. That is why David is not afraid when he enters into the valley of the shadow of death. What is death? Uh, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Death is the result or the penalty that our sins deserve. But if you are a Christian, then Jesus paid the penalty on your behalf on the cross. We all have to face death, but the Christian is not afraid of death at all, because for the Christian, death is only a shadow. And there's a big difference between a shadow and reality. Uh, the shadow of a serpent cannot bite you. Jesus conquered death for the Christian. Jesus experienced the reality of the valley of the shadow of death when he went through the valley of Kedron to the Garden of Gethsemane. And when Jesus died on our behalf on the cross, Jesus conquered death for Christians. Uh, so in the gospel, Jesus taught Martha, those who believe in him shall live even though they have died. And if there is a shadow, there must also be light. There can be no shadows without light. And the darker the shadow, the brighter the light. Again, in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Indeed, in him there is no darkness at all. Because Jesus is the good shepherd to lay down his life for the sheep. We can say, like David, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Uh, these words have been one of the most precious promises for Christians uh, throughout the ages. David has enemies, but I will not be afraid, he says. And that is amply illustrated by David's life. Remember, when he was a teenager, he faced the giant Goliath. Saul, the great king, was terrified. David, the teenager, uh, not a fear to be seen. A few uh, months later on, Saul pursued him, tried to kill him. David, not anxious at all. Many examples uh, from David's life. Because you are with me, I will not be afraid. Indeed, if you have God... You have everything. Uh, it is the presence of the shepherd that makes the nerves of the sheep calm down. And then, uh, as we have said, there's another five blessings uh, that flow from the presence of the shepherd. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The shepherd is close by and he's got a rod. Uh, the rod is used to Defend the sheep against wild animals. And he has got a staff. The staff is there to direct the sheep and also sometimes to help the sheep. Uh, often the, the staff of the shepherd has a hook, a curve at the top, which a shepherd may use to uh, hook the sheep if the sheep falls in, uh, fall, fall into a crevice or get stuck in the mud. Uh, the shepherd will use a staff to pull out the sheep. David is confident. Your rod and your staff always brings comfort to me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
amazing. Life gets better after the valley. Uh, before David, as a sheep, was eating grass, now he is joining a banquet. Before the psalmist faced a valley, now he faces enemies. But yet it is in these very difficulties that he experiences life in abundance, that he experiences victory. When the valley, when the enemies appear, life becomes even more meaningful, more glorious. In difficulties, there will be more blessings for the Christian. There will be more understanding of God's word. There will be more faith and confidence. There will be greater measures of peace and joy. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Anointing has to do with service. Through a range of difficult and precious experiences, the Lord will prepare you to serve him more effectively. My cup runs over. Uh, literally, a direct translation here. My cup is abundant. Uh, as we know in the Bible, a cup refers to your assignment in life. The lot that has fallen to you. For us as Christians, of course, we know that nothing happens by accident. That we have got God's good will behind everything. My cup overflows. My cup is abundant. Too many blessings that I can contain. Too many avenues for ministry, for service that I can do uh, justice to. Uh, Jesus will protect you and enable you to overcome all challenges. This is a second great assurance that we may take from this psalm, verses 4 to 5. It doesn't matter what happens. Jesus will be close at hand to protect you, to guide you, and to give you the victory. The more you pay for something, the better or the more you look after it, the more precious it is to you. Jesus paid for his elect with his precious blood. He will by no means lose any of them. He says no one would be able to snatch any of my sheep out of my hand. Uh, I had a sheep once. I grew up on a farm. Uh, we had sheep. And my father had 90 sheep. And then one day when I was a little boy, I bought one sheep from him. And this sheep was so special to me. Uh, I could identify this sheep among the 90 others. Um, for most people, sheep look all alike. But if one or two sheep belong to you, they are very precious to you. You know everything about them. From a distance, you can identify them. So too, the Lord knows you intimately. The Lord knows your circumstances. The Lord knows the challenges you face. The Lord knows your difficulties. The Lord knows your temperament. You can be very confident. Jesus will protect you, and enable you to overcome all challenges. Finally, note in verse 6, we have the conclusion of the psalm. Uh, note here David's resolution. Uh, verse 6, the first line there, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. It's like a promise, but it's also like a New resolution. Because David has experienced all the truths of verses 1 to 5. He cannot but again rededicate himself to the Lord. Surely, 
expresses a very firm resolution. David has no doubt or hesitation about it. And yes, brothers and sisters, we can make this assertion because of the grace and the faithfulness of the Lord. We can be confident of the future, not because of us, but because of the Lord's electing love. Because he is Emmanuel. He is the God who will always be with his people, no matter what happens. In John chapter 6, verse 66, uh, many followers of Jesus no longer followed him. They changed their minds. Then Jesus turned to his disciples and he asked him, Will you also go away? Do you remember how Peter responded? Lord, where can we go? Only you have the words of eternal life. And we have come to believe and we have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. The psalm reads, goodness and mercy will follow me. Uh, here again, we need to adjust the translation a little bit. Uh, the meaning of the Hebrew is, goodness and mercy will pursue me all the days of my life. Not just follow, but will pursue me all the days of my life. Abundant life is to live in the goodness of the Lord. But for that to happen, we also need the mercy of the Lord. Because often we fall short in so many ways. But congregation, God's goodness will pursue you. Not just that. In addition, God's mercy, God's forgiveness, God's grace, God's renewal will always be there for you when you need it. So future failures doesn't matter. You belong to the fold. You are a sheep of the good shepherd. And of his sheep, he will lose none. And lastly, David says, And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The last location of the Christian's experience, the destination of the journey, is the house of the Lord. And indeed, the house of the Lord is the best place to be. Uh, we like traveling, we like camping and bushwalking, but always we prefer to go home. <laughs> Still not as good as home. East, west, home is best. Uh, the Christian's true home is the house of the Lord. In Psalm 84 we read, For a day in your court is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Psalm 26, O oh Lord, I love the habitation of your house, the place where your glory dwells. Psalm 27, One thing I have asked of the Lord, and that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Psalm 65, Blessed is the one you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. Indeed, we shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. David will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amazing. What blessings there are for the Christian. Uh, people sometimes say, all good things must come to an end. Not for the Christian. Certainly for 
non-believers, yes, all good things will come to an end sooner rather than later. Uh, life in the world, uh, life on earth. Yeah, there are some pleasures, some enjoyments to be had, but most of it is a struggle. And then after that, for the non-Christian, death and eternal damnation. Yes, all good things come to an end, to a terrible end, we might say, for the non-Christian. But this is not true of the Christian. This is not true of David. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. For Christians, God's blessing never ends. And this is a third assurance that we may take from this psalm. Jesus will bless you and give you everlasting life. Uh, in conclusion, uh, are you one of the Lord's sheep? The content of Psalm 23 is great. But do you know the shepherd of the psalm? The good shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you recognized your need to be a sheep? Uh, to be vulnerable. To be a person that needs a shepherd. Uh, have you left the Lord's flock? Maybe you haven't been to church for a long, long time. Uh, remember, for sheep, grass always looks greener on the other side. The best place to be is with the Lord's flock. Uh, perhaps it's time for you to come back to church. Do you have challenges in life, work, or family? Be at ease. Be at rest, because the Lord will guide you. The Lord will give you rest. The Lord will give you the victory. The Lord is your shepherd. Uh, in 2023, may this be our experience. May we get to know the shepherd of Psalm 23 more and more. Knowing him is indeed to experience eternal and abundant life. Let's pray. Our great God and Heavenly Father, we do want to thank you that you are our shepherd. We thank you for the love that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he, through your grace, has become our good shepherd, that he laid, his down, that he laid down his life for us. And that now no longer do we need to be vulnerable or straight sheep. Uh, we thank you. We do pray that you will encourage us through the assurance, through the promises of Psalm 23. We pray that we in our lives, in 2023, that we will discover that you are the one who meet our every need. And may it be our confession in this new year, that you are our shepherd. This morning, we also especially pray for those who may be walking through deep valleys, those who may be facing enemies. Lord, we pray that you will be near to them. We pray that you will encourage them. We pray that you will give them wisdom, strength, and peace. We indeed pray that you will prepare their table in the presence of their enemies, that you will anoint their heads with oil. We pray that the cup may overflow. And Lord, we thank you uh, that we have the certain prospect of dwelling in your house forever. Amen.